NVIDIA today announced its RTX 50 series Blackwell GPUs, the Blackwell architecture now coming to consumer products, but it also had an additional important announcement. Do you like my jacket? Yeah. I thought I'd go the other way from Gary Shapiro. I'm in Las Vegas after all. If this, if this doesn't work out, if all of you object, well, just get used to it. I think, I really think you have to let this sink in. In another hour or so, you're gonna feel good about it. Well, at least we got that out of our system, so now we can continue on without a hitch to the news. Wait for it. Wait for it. I thought I was worthy. It wouldn't be CES without that. So, uh, NVIDIA today announced that its RTX Blackwell series will have, at least at the start, a 5090 priced at $2,000, a 5080 priced at $1,000, a 5070 Ti at $750, and an RTX 5070 at $550. We don't have the full specs for these right now, so we'll have to reserve most of the judgment until we know what they actually are, especially because NVIDIA historically has kind of shuffled the stack a little bit where it's not always 100% clear generationally if the name might mean the same thing or not. So we'll look at that as we get into the reviews. But NVIDIA claims that its RTX 5070 notably has, quote, 4090 performance at $549, which is definitely something worth inspecting. Now, they also stated in that same uh, sort of sentence that this is, quote, impossible without AI, and also stated it is, quote, impossible without GDDR7, which NVIDIA is moving to for the newly announced video cards. Uh, in this lineup. There's a lot more too, so let's get into the news. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Aeronaut and Hydronaut Thermal Pastes. Aeronaut is Thermal Grizzly's entry-level thermal solution, marketed as resistant to curing and for long-term endurance. Hydronaut is Thermal Grizzly's next step up, targeted for overclocking and higher performance applications. We've used Hydronaut on a lot of our systems internally over the years. You can learn more at the link in the description below. NVIDIA spent a lot of time talking about AI. The GPUs are the biggest thing we cover, the hardware, so we'll start there. Uh, and we'll also get into some of the pricing discussion a little more towards the end of this, because that's obviously something that everyone's thinking about. All right, so NVIDIA announced its Blackwell GPUs that will arrive to the consumer market in January. The GPU, presumably the full Blackwell die that was detailed, was noted as a 92 billion transistor solution, as compared to the RTX 4090's approximate 76 billion transistors. Notably, the card CEO Jensen Huan showed off at the event appeared to be a two-slot card which he noted has two fans. This is a stark contrast to the huge prototype and video cooler that we just tore down. I have that right here. It's coming to the channel soon. Uh, and this is actually really relevant. I was kind of shocked at this because this was totally separate content piece we're working on. You'll see this very soon. It's actually kind of an amazing cooler, uh, insane assembly. Anyway, this is a separate video. The point is, I think they took some learnings from this, even though it is massive and applied it to what they were showing off on stage today. Uh, and we'll kind of come back to that board. So the two-slot card that Jensen Huan showed off is a big swing from the three-slot and four-slot coolers we've become used to, which have been necessary for thermal and for power management. NVIDIA also posted some hard specs to its website. We can start with the power, which is listed as 575 watts total graphics power for the 5090. It's an interesting thing to leave out of the keynote. We have a whole separate video on 12 high power and how the whole spec has just been a complete dumpster fire. Uh, it's a deep dive, you check it out if you haven't seen it. It's an hour on a cable specification and people really liked it. Interesting times we live in. Uh, but our concern here is that's just, we think that's just too close to the limits already for, I mean, it's a difference of the 4090s typically run at about 450 watts without some kind of overclock. And uh, with an overclock at like 600, you get a hit 660. It really depends on how it's configured uh, and how you count transients. But 575 concerns us a bit. We'll keep an eye on it, obviously. We're wondering also if they maybe did some of this redesign of the cooler to try and direct some of that airflow over the cable specifically to help deal with that extra heat. So anyway, that was a, one of the more 
concerning points we saw. The RTX 5090 Blackwell GPU is listed as having 21,760 CUDA cores, memory at 32 gigabytes of GDDR7, clocks at 2.41 gigahertz boost and 2.01 gigahertz base, a large 512-bit memory interface width, uh, and NVIDIA has iterated its Tensor Core generation to five and its RT Core generation to four for Blackwell, though we don't yet have architectural details on the consumer side as to what specifically that means. We expect those details pretty soon. The FE card is listed as 304 millimeters by 137 millimeters for dimensions, and then that is the two slot card. Jumping over to the prior RTX 4090 for reference, the 4090 has 16,384 CUDA cores, so that's notably different from the 21,760 of the 5090, but cores can't be compared linearly, especially cross generation, so the real world impact will be more difficult to track and we'll just have to test it. The 4090 also ran 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X, rather than the 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 on the 5090. The 4090's clocks are higher as advertised on NVIDIA's webpage at 2.52 gigahertz boost and 2.23 base. Of course, this changes based on the partner, but clocks like core count uh, is not everything. Zooming out to look at memory capacity, we see the 5090 at 32 gigabytes, the 5080 at 16, the 5070 Ti at 16, and the 5070 at 12 gigabytes. For perspective, the 4070 is also 12 gigabytes, the 4070 Ti is 12 gigabytes, the 4070 Ti Super is 16 gigabytes, and the 4080 is 16 gigabytes. Going to a fuller look at the specs, the 5080 is listed at 10,752 CUDA cores, which is slightly more than the 4080's 9,728, and not the same huge change we see with the 4090 to the 5090. The 5070 Ti lists 8,960 against 7,680 on the 4070 Ti, and the 5070 lists 6,144 up from 5,888 on the 4070 configuration. Now again, these aren't directly comparable, they are cross-generation, but it helps us to understand what NVIDIA thinks in terms of its product positioning in the stack, uh, and it helps us get an idea for, are they shifting it again and moving some things down and some things up? Uh, interesting here to see too, the gap between the 4090 and 5090 being seemingly, at least on paper, one of the larger, if not the largest gaps out of this entire family so far, where we kind of saw that with the 4090 versus 4080, uh, where the difference between them was abnormal compared to years prior, generations past, where you just wouldn't get gains that big from the flagship to the next step down. It was not always like that. That was kind of a, a pretty new thing with the 40 series. As for the rest, the full specs page shows a 2.62 gigahertz max boost on the 5080, 2.45 gigahertz on the 5070 Ti, 2.51 on the 5070, and then we already said the 5090 has a larger memory bus. As for the others, the 5080 and 5070 Ti both run a 256-bit bus with the 5070 at 192 bits. Other than the 575 watts of the 5090, NVIDIA lists the other cards at 360 watts, 300 watts, and 250 watts for total board power. Broadly speaking, NVIDIA's power consumption appears to be increasing. On the very least, this is timed well with our efficiency testing, so it is possible for power consumption to go up, but efficiency to also improve. It depends on the output. That's part of the equation for efficiency, so we're definitely going to be uh, continuing to run those tests. Next one. So uh, we, of course, will have our own benchmarks to go through soon, and so will all the other reviewers. We'd always encourage you to check out a review from a third party. Uh, whether or not it's us doesn't matter, but just someone who's a third party to get numbers you can trust, but it still helps to reference first party claims to get an idea for where they are setting the expectation. So let's look at some of those. NVIDIA's webpage has a relative performance chart that's pretty hard to actually read, but we could try to get an idea. NVIDIA claims the 5090 outperforms the 4090 by over 2x in some situations, such as Cyberpunk and Black Myth, among others. In these tests, they list DLSS plus full RT as the settings. The footnote, that's nearly the same color as the page background, says that the 40 series used frame generation in this testing, but the 50 series used MFG 4X mode. This makes the comparison not like for like. We consider this approach flawed, but we'll look at their other claims for full perspective. Switching to the 5080, NVIDIA shows its performance as outperforming the 4080 by, again, sometimes 2X. This is tough to filter though with the differing settings tested. The 5070 Ti shows much the same sort of visualization against the 4070 Ti and then the 5070 against the 4070 again showing about the same trend. 
Of all of these tests, the Plague Tale comparison is maybe the most fair, since NVIDIA notes that it only has DLSS 3. As for what DLSS 4 actually is, we have not had enough time to really thoroughly read through this, but we have some pieces where NVIDIA launched a new blog post to introduce its multi-frame generation, or MFG. The post reads this, quote, DLSS multi-frame generation generates up to three additional frames per traditionally rendered frame, working in unison with the complete suite of DLSS technologies to multiply frame rates by up to 8x over traditional, they call it, brute force rendering. Now, the page continues to say, quote, our new frame generation AI model is 40% faster, uses 30% less VRAM, and only needs to run once per rendered frame to generate multiple frames. For example, in Warhammer 40K Darktide, this model provided a 10% faster frame rate while using 400 megabytes less memory at 4K max settings using DLSS frame generation, end quote. Now, this section of the article is also interesting. It indicates that you'll be able to override the DLSS model used in games that don't get updates from devs, which is already possible to be done manually by some users who replace DLL files. But this new approach looks like it'll be more user-friendly. NVIDIA stated that its Blackwell GPUs will have 2x the memory bandwidth of ADA at 1.8 terabytes per second for the cited spec, uh, this will likely change depending on which model you look at, but we need the full specs for everything. It claims 2x the RT teraflops and one and a half times the ADA shader performance. The PCB showcased was a relatively small square, like a further cut down version of the 4090 FE PCB if you were to chop the wings off. It appears to be sandwiched between two full flow through fans. And that, again, is where we think they're getting the learnings from this prototype cooler that we're not supposed to have. Um, because this is a full flow through. So there's no PCB in the way, which is why it's so thick, because they shove it in at the bottom. Uh, and that actually enables the performance that it gets. And so they're moving to full flow through, sort of, except with that square PCB right in the middle. The design in their explosion diagram illustrates the PCB centrally with densely populated components on both sides of the board. The cooler also utilizes a vapor chamber cooling solution with what appears to be five heat pipes, assuming the render is accurate. The GPU directly contacts the vapor chamber, as you'd expect, with the flow through area handling the flanking heat sinks. So on the cooling side for the Founders Edition board from NVIDIA, this is a massive change. Uh, in the 20 series, they had a solid wall that they blew the air into, as has sort of been the main approach to cooling. And uh, those coolers were not particularly, they, they weren't really good. The 900 and the 10 series, the reference designs that NVIDIA did were awful compared to the partners. And then in the 30 series, they started to get kind of scary competitive for partners. And then 40 uh, continued that. And this is actually a further continuation of that, this one I have in front of me. So we're very curious to see how this goes, uh, because it's interesting where if the partners can adapt to this and introduce it, and it's actually effective, then great. We get skinnier video cards again. That's going to come down to cost to manufacture it, of course. Uh, but also, it does mean that the partners face competition from their supplier, which has always been a concern as companies like NVIDIA push further into their own uh, reference and, and FE models now. This last section we're not going to spend much time on, uh, but they talked about AI on GeForce a bit and noted some new solutions for gaming specifically. Again, all related to the best buzzword ever invented for shareholders. So they talked about RTX neural material and showed an example of reducing the material size from 47 megabytes to uh, 16 megabytes with the solution. And then they also had some uh, DLSS um, showcases in a quick slide. NVIDIA's keynote was lengthy, as it typically is. It covered a lot of topics outside of our direct area of focus. So it's industry and everything else that we don't really cover. For now, we're just focusing on getting these basics out to you for the video cards, and then we'll revisit all the other stuff uh, as we get more depth from the company and architectural information and just the ability to test the products. Uh, as for release dates, NVIDIA cited January in its keynote, but its website lists January 30th specifically for the 5090 and 5080, and it says 5070 Ti and 5070 cards will arrive in February. So um, overall, I mean, that covers most of the announcement. This uh, this day has been crazy. It started with a bunch of keynotes for other stuff. We went through AMDs and then through NVIDIAs, and uh, we're flying soon 
to do some other stuff. I don't know when we talk about it, but uh, it's it's related to all this other activity. So um, for now, we're focused on getting you the news. We'll have a lot of thoughts on things like pricing. The, the one quick thing I want to throw out there is that at the time I'm filming this, and this may change uh, when by the time we get it up, but I doubt it, AMD has not yet really said anything about its GPUs except to the press. So it announced GPUs to the press, that's us, and uh, that would be the 9070 and the 9070XT. It did not really talk about them in its own keynote presentation to its own customers. And so it looks to us like waiting to see what NVIDIA was going to do. And uh, AMD had some responses to media and Q&A. That's what it looks like to us. Like that's, that's all I can really say about that. So uh, won't be surprised if AMD jumps back in pretty soon, like in the next couple of days and says a little bit more about RDNA GPUs coming up. But either way, it looks like uh, NVIDIA is the one here that is, is planting a flag in the ground and saying this is the way we're going to do it. We're going to generate everything into AI. And uh, that's going to make testing very complicated and very interesting if they really push that feature set. So we're looking forward to the challenge of verifying and validating the claims that these manufacturers are making. Uh, and we'll have all that to you soon as we get the parts in for review. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. It was a hard day for uh, for media coverage here, but we really enjoy this stuff and we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, this is the type of stuff I love doing because it's just complete chaos and that's fun. So the, the, the chaos of launches is what makes things interesting. You can subscribe for more because there's going to be more this week. And then otherwise, we've got testing content coming up with this thing on the table. You can go to store.cameraaccess.net, grab one of these shirts from our Disappointment Tour series, and we'll see you all next time.